If you enjoy this video, hit that like button. And if you want to submit to be on the show, take a look at the information in the description. All right, I got a hand from uh, SA Card House, 510 yes. No Limit game that runs on Sundays. SA Card. Does that run, Jay? This is another reason why I'm excited to talk to you. So, does that game run every Sunday? Every Sunday at 10 a.m. Oh my! You texted me about this before. I gotta, I gotta go down there. So I think what I, what I want to do is, cause, and you had, you had texted me about this, right? A couple mm -hmm, of times. Because mm -hmm. what I think I want, sure. I, I want to do is, I want to go down and play the Big O game like Saturday, Saturday night, and then play this game on Sunday, right? Like there's yeah, always Big yeah, O. That... And then, and then if it starts at Sunday, I'm sure it's probably a pretty de – is it like an old man coffee game? Are there old? Is it usually older guys in the game because it's so early in the morning? Or No, no. It's oh, okay. usually uh, – you know, I mean, I'm 52, so yeah. there's a couple of guys my age and several younger guys, and it, it's a mix. It's, it's quite a mix. It's, uh, okay. it's, it's generally a pretty good game. Yeah, like because that's interesting because I because um, my wife actually likes to go to an outlet store because she ships stuff back to Thailand as part of her business and there's one in like New Bromfels or something Marcus. like yeah Saint Marcus yeah, so just... so we have to go there so she has to go there so I was like maybe we should just go down to San Antonio once a, once a month or maybe even more and I'll play Big O and then now that I know that this five ten goes on Sunday that that's very very interesting um, yeah and and our five five goes. Every day of the week, it's it's an excellent five five game. Right, and a lot, uh, of, crazy, a lot of crazy Asians on there. <laughs> you know who Young Man is, the Vietnamese guy. I do, and yeah. he he played and he played in our game several times. So he he was he came up to Austin actually. He was I was trying to get him on the live stream last week in the game, but apparently some one of these guys poached him for a private game, and they he came to Austin to play in the private game. That's how legendary he is. Of course, he causes problems and stuff at the table. But I remember the last time I was there. There was five five, right? So if there's three or four big O games and like one's not that good, I could even recycle myself through the five five, right? Too. So that's that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can if you if you're not happy with the big O game, it's too tight or whatever. Yeah. That's what a lot of the big O players do. They just jump out and come play the five five. Yeah. Interesting. All right. So five ten yeah. essay card house. And what is does this game get pretty deep? Uh, it does get pretty deep as the day goes on. Yeah. Everybody usually starts with – there's no max on the buy-in, so mm -hmm. it's uh, min buy-ins 500. Yeah. Uh, everybody usually sits down with uh, 1,000, 1,500, some uh -huh. people 2,000. Okay. So uh, I'm in the big blind here. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got 1,500 in my stack. I had to rebuy. I lost like 2,500 in a double board bomb pot just a few minutes earlier. Double board bomb pot um, down there is just the same, right? Just split between the two best hands of one board and the other yeah, board. Yeah, or yeah, split or scoop, whatever. Right, right, right. Uh, So uh, the main villain here is an under the gun one, and he's got an effective stack of 1,200. Okay. So there, we, it, at SA Cardhouse, we have a uh, hard rock straddle on the button that is ultimate last action. That's a Houston and, straddle type where it's just so – even if somebody raises in front of you, it goes – the button's always going to act last, right, basically? Act very last. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Uh -huh. Correct. So, so there's a $20 uh, straddle, button straddle on here. Is that – so does everybody uh, do that? Because I, I hate – I just think that that – Why wouldn't you if, if you got ultimate last action? <laughs> well, no, I know. I just think that they, obviously it's a huge advantage for the button, but I just think it would kill the game. It would just make the game worse like in terms of action. Uh, it's too much of an advantage um, for the position player. There's no lack of action over here. Oh, okay. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, villain one, uh, he's under the gun plus one. He calls a twenty dollars straddle. Uh, middle position calls twenty dollars. Yep. Middle position two calls twenty dollars. Yep. And so it skips the button, uh, and it comes to me, and I look down at Ace of Hearts, Ace of Spades. I decided to raise it to 140 to try and eliminate some of these characters. Yep, so three limps, right? Skips the button. You've got aces in the big blind. You make it 140, right? Correct. Okay. Um, villain one calls 140. Middle position one calls. MP2 folds. Mm -hmm. And the button calls 140. So it's uh, four ways to a flop. So for villain one is what, from plus one? Right? Is that right? Uh, plus one, correct. All right. So plus one calls, MP1 calls, fold, and button calls because button's got last action. So so there's about 580 in the pot. Yep. Okay. Four ways, right? 580. Yep. Yep. Okay. 
And the flop comes out queen three five rainbow. Okay. Uh, I decide to. It looks pretty innocuous, so I lead for two seventy five. By the way, your stack to pot ratio is really small here, which is quite good, right? I mean, whenever you have a situation, even when you're up against three people here, um, mm -hmm. you know, you've got thirteen fifty or so left in your stack. The pot's five eighty. Right, I mean, you've got two, right. two to three. Whenever you get two to three pot size bets left going to the flop, first of all, it's almost impossible for you to ever fold here on this board. So when uh, you see exactly. a when you see a board <laughs> where there really aren't two pair combos that should be out there, and there's no straight, and you're less than three pot size bets left, I mean, it's just it's impossible, right? So queen three five, and this is an awesome, awesome board for you. It's so multi way. Again, you know, I'll go new school and old school here. And you might know the players better than I do in terms of how sticky they are. But the theory here is that you can bet very, very small because you don't you, you almost want people to call. You want people to have to defend here. Because when you throw out 275 as a bet here, which is about half the size of the pot, the plus one in the MP1 player, they almost cannot continue here unless they have a queen. Uh, on queen mm -hmm. three five, like they just that's their primary continue hand is a queen, right? Right, and you have right. two aces in your hand, so that cuts some of the ace queens down. Whereas if you were to bet like one fifty, something like that, you're not scared of anything, and you're never folding. So you want some of the continues here. You want the value from some of the, um, from some of the ace queens, queen jacks. Well, well, those are those hands jack. are well, those hands are gonna call, but you want value from like eights, nines, hands that will be forced mm -hmm. to fold out when you throw two seventy five out. The other thing too, uh, yeah. and yeah, the other thing too is, and I'm not, you know, you know, I preach an unbalanced strategy. I would think about in this spot, hey, what would I do with Ace King here? You know, I've gone when we were talking a little bit in lower stakes with some of the previous callers. I was like, I would bet my hand here at five ten. I might start thinking about, okay, what what hands do I have here? Because this is a very tight open for me, right? I'm I'm opening over several limps from the big blind. Right in the straddle pot right. off of a short stack from up front in the blinds, very tight. So, what hands do I have here, and how would I play them? Meaning, like, how would you play Ace King here? Now, if you say, well, if I had Ace King here, I might bet 275 to 280 as well. I'd say, okay, it seems a little bit on the larger side because I would say, okay, if you're going to bet Ace King here, then you know, take it for a two or three straight thing where you go same thing 150 like I would do with the Aces, and then you follow up a turn bet. You see what happens. Uh, who calls positional awareness to, you know, hopefully if there's mm -hmm. just one caller, it would be the button. And then there are several cards that you can fire turn any Broadway that's going to give you a gut shot with your ace, if you had ace king. Um, and then quite possibly wheel cards too, like a four and a deuce to give you additional equity. So that's how I would look at structuring sort of my range. Um, but I do like a little bit of a smaller bet. But anyways, okay. But again, I mean, we talked, I talked to Peter who plays at, um, Peter Unamas, who plays down the street at um, the No Limit. What's the, what's the No Limit down the uh, in, in San Antonio? Not SA. I don't know, uh, for some reason, Ra uh, is it uh, rounders? rounders. Yeah, Rounders. And he's like, he yeah. he makes these sizings all the time because people just call. So I mean, it's Texas poker. Exactly. I get it. That's I get it. So you know. So just, I tried, you know, I tried to bet big so I could get any queen right. that that might be there to to call, and you know, we're building a pot here. Right. And so uh, everybody folded except villain one, and uh, the turn comes another five. So 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 a plus one calls. Plus one calls, correct. So the pot now is what eleven thirty, right? Because you put two seven. Uh, correct. Eleven thirty, yeah. and, and plus yeah. one only started with twelve hundred, right? Right. So right. two seventy five, four hundred. So he's got seven hundred left, right? Correct. So correct. yeah, I mean, it's really hard to fuck this hand up now. You say the turn is a five because I mean, you've got. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I suppose. Here's the thing. So this is a, again like a positional awareness thing. He should be. I don't know what kind of player he is, but when he calls next to act, when you bet half the pot with two people left behind them. His range should be qu only queen plus. That's it. Um, that's yeah, what I, that's it, what it I would think. It has to be, or it's supposed to be. 
he should never have a five here with two people left to act behind him. I mean, occasionally you're going to run into that, but this is how we have to think about the hand, right? Because there's a couple of people behind him. I mean, he only has 700 left. What you could do here, I wouldn't even, I mean, I, I might just go 300 and then all, because you go 300 and then the, he calls, pot's going to be 1,900 and he's going to have 400 left, right? 300 all in. Yeah. You can bet one quarter yeah. all in. Now, if you were deeper, if you were deeper and we could really tag this guy as having only a queen plus, you could make a case where if you wanted to get more money in the pot, you could even go for a check raise on the turn. And that would take mm -hmm. take, take a special player, but the ranges are so tight here. No one should ever have a five, and he's got so many queen X's. If he's always going to monkey bet off top pair, you could actually like make a min check raise on the turn to build the pot up. But with the with this stacked up, there, you don't even need to mess around. Just 300, yeah. 300 and then 400 all in. That's it, you know? Well, this villain, I mean, he's loose aggressive, and I've seen him bluff numerous times. I've seen him turn over several suited connectors. Um, you know, so when the five showed up, I thought, well, you know, it's possible he could have five, six suited here, and, you know, he's got trips. So, I, but, you know, I figured maybe he's got, you know, with a king queen suited, queen jack suited, ace queen perhaps. Well, and yeah, I mean, so, if people are saying, like, listen, like, like, it's very hard for you to screw this hand up because he only has 700 left. You could check here, too, and the reason why is because he really shouldn't have many bluffs here, which which leads right. me towards just betting 300 and 400 because I don't want him to check it back. Like, if it goes check, check, if you check and he mm -hmm. checks it back, then you just have to jam all in on the river for 700 and make it yeah. look like you have ace-king. Um, if he's a type of guy that's, like, overly bluffy and peeling really wide – then probably checking would be the right play because you're still going to get the money in with a queen that's probably going to bet off or you can put it in at the end and then you get some value from his bluffs but by betting. And, I'm just saying And in that theory. was my plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was my plan. So when the second turn came, uh, when the turn came another five, I just checked. And he bet 275, same bet I bet on the flop. Well, here, okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing now, though, that's a little bit tricky. So... He bets 275, so he bets like what I had sort of said on the turn, right? That I might yeah, bet. Yeah, same proportion, right. yeah. So, okay, you're getting the bluff equity from him. So if you make the call here, the pot's going to be like 1,700, and he's going to have like uh, about – 500 left. Yeah, about 500 left. But it gets awkward because, okay, are you going to check call here and then check to him on the river, and he's going to check back a queen? That's a disaster. You have two out. You have two options here. You can just check raise now – or just play like a call on the turn and then just bet the river all in. This is why I don't like to give the betting lead up from out of position because it is a disaster if to leave you, that money on if the you, table if on you the river. Check call and it goes check check at the end. It's a disaster. It is an absolute disaster, right? It's an absolute disaster. And um even if he's bluffing somehow, I don't know if he's gonna bluff all in because it looks like you're calling. Right. What ended up happening? Mm -hmm. So you check. Well, I check. Yeah. And the, on the 275. Turn, and right. Right. And yeah, you call. Yeah. Hero calls. And I call. OK. And then the river comes another five. And I'm like, well, at this just point, jam I'm all never in. folding. Just jam all in. Don't yeah, let it. Don't well, let him. Don't... I checked to him and he jammed, which is, you know, I wanted all his money in the pot anyway, which I should have probably just jammed. But I just check, check called on the river all in. Yeah. And uh, he rolls over queen queen, which surprised queen, me queen. because wow. there was no yeah there was no raise pre flop from him mm -hmm. you know under the gun with the straddle and he was willing to go four or five ways to the flop you know with his have you big watched pair. so this reminds me of have you seen any of the TCH live stream at all yeah I've been watching some of that yeah okay so that the the video that went that got that's up to forty thousand views that. I was saying at the beginning that I sort of took the best hands and put up of Matt L winning sixteen thousand um, seven five hundred. There's a hand in there mm -hmm. where he was had kings against aces, right? I don't know if you saw that kings against this guy Todd with aces, and it was a four bet pre flop and it, and it called and the board came out like I think it was queen deuce deuce and aces bet Matt called the turn was like a, a five. And it went check, check, and the river was a deuce. So it was like queen, deuce, deuce, five, deuce. And the guy with aces check, and Matt checked back with kings. And I was like, oh, my God, aces just left all the money on the table. But here, it's an absolute disaster uh, 
for you, for you, if a queen checks back, I'm just putting this out here, checks and uh, IP all in. It, just because he's got queen, queen, uh, I mean, it, you know, that that's fine. But you got to think about the, the his whole hand. Like whenever you, you have an overpair on a board that beats top full house, queen, three, five, five, five. It's a, mm -hmm. like he, he's, he's going to check back a queen here some of the time, man. Jay, like he's going to think that you're uh, he's not always jamming a queen. Now, some, a lot of people might because they're like, oh, it's top full house. But how would you feel yeah. if you check back king queen here at the end? If you check the river and you check yeah, back king queen? Uh, yeah, I had to kick, I had to kick myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but um, anyways, hey, man, thanks for the call. I'll be in touch with you because now I'm thinking more and more like uh, maybe I'll head down there pretty soon. If you like what you've seen here, please hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this call in hand, hit the like button down below. To check out CrushLivePoker.com, click on the link in the description. Use the code YTA300 to get the first 30 days for free.